Following the goblin's trail, you come across a large cave in a hillside, five miles from the scene of the ambush. A shallow stream flows out of the cave mouth, which is screened by dense briar thickets. A narrow dry path leads into the cave on the right-hand side of the stream. What do you do now? Okay, so I am going to run up to the bridge. I'm gonna see if there's any goblins there, and if there are, I'm gonna push them off the bridge. You cannot see the bridge yet. Um, you're at the mouth of the cave, it's dark, and there's a bend before that. So technically you kind of only see what's in front of you right here. But I have dark vision. Right, I know you have dark vision, but still your character does not see the bridge just because you see the whole map. Okay, well I'm gonna go over to where the beds are and see if I can like surprise the goblins and get them in their sleep. Alright, <sighs> yeah, um, you know, whatever, let's just roll initiative. Yeah! Oh hey there, welcome back to Nether Creature Crafts. Today we're going to be dealing with Fog of War. We're going to be using the Amber Temple as our template for the maps we make today. Come along, let's check it out. Like many great DMs, we're stealing this idea from someone else. In this case, that someone else is my buddy John. He likes to use poster boards cut into different sections, that way the players don't know what's coming next. So we're going to try our hand at that. Here we are using the book for reference and a battle mat to just make a quick sketch to make sure that our poster boards are big enough to fit this temple. There's two floors in this temple, so we ended up getting two poster boards. It's not a big deal if your poster board isn't big enough. You can cut some rooms down if you need to. Also, you can tell we're not being huge on detail here, as we won't on our poster boards either. We don't want our players to know what's in the rooms first before we describe it. Once we're pretty satisfied that we can replicate this temple, we're going to switch over to our poster boards. Now I know I've been saying poster boards and you may be thinking, hey nether creature, that looks like a foam board. Well that's because it is. I did this because it's more durable and I plan on using these as dungeon tiles in the future for other locations. But if you're looking to just make a simple map, poster boards are cheap and easy to cut. Here we are just laying out a grid. A one inch by one inch grid. So yeah, lines. Lots and lots of lines. This is a tedious process, but I find a bit of zen in it. Try it out. Once we got all our lines marked out, we're using a straight edge ruler and a sharpie to really border off our fortress or temple or dungeon, whatever you're crafting. We're taking our time and using the book for reference, making sure we don't mess anything up. And as you can see, I messed a bunch of stuff up. So I used some rubbing alcohol <laughs> to erase where the doors should actually be. Maybe take your time and be more careful than I was. Maybe start with pencil. I was using Sharpie because it shows up better on video. So yeah, learn from my mistakes. As you can see in this last part, we're not actually connecting some of the rooms 
as they would be in the book, but that's because we're going to cut all these out later. We'll talk about that when we get there. And yeah, once it's all done, that's one floor. Time to do another, but I won't bore you by showing you that footage. Thumbs up. Looking pretty good. All right, and if you're using poster board, there's really no need to set on cardboard, but because I'm not using scissors and I'm cutting this with an X-Acto knife, I laid down some cardboard so that I didn't mess up Mrs. Nether Creature's kitchen table, because she'd kill me. When it came down to cut the rooms from the entire poster board, I asked my buddy John what his thought process was, and here's what he had to say. He said, I like to grid up a whole sheet of poster board, and I start with the largest rooms and work down to the smallest. As far as segmenting, big common areas, rooms behind closed doors, secret passageways, should be their own cutout. A hallway that leads to a fork or a T should be segmented accordingly. Anytime the party has to make a choice, that's where you segment it up. And yeah, that made a lot of sense to me, so I use those guidelines when cutting it up. If you're making your own fortress, you can do it all willy-nilly, however you like. Cut the hallways from the rooms, make separate rooms, but definitely make sure the secret passageways are their own separate thing, because you don't want the players to know that they're there. For the last part, we took some of the scrap uh, foam board we had, and we're going to just make a little set of stairs. This is going to add a little bit of three dimension to our uh, board, and yeah, let our players know that there's a bit of elevation when they're coming from the top floor to the bottom floor. This was really easy to do. Like I said, I just used a piece of scrap, and with some Elmer's glue, we glued them together. Just kind of checking to make sure that that fits the hallways and the stairs that I want them to be. Looks pretty good. And yeah, just slap some Elmer's glue on there and uh, weigh it down with a book. Fun stuff. If you've made it this far into the video and you're enjoying it, uh, feel free to like and subscribe. Leave a comment for the algorithm. It really helps me out a lot. I have a bunch of other videos you can go back and watch. And uh, I plan to do a lot more in the future. Any comments are welcome. Here I am showing you just how easy it is to set up when you're done. This way you don't just have one giant map where the players can see the entire layout at once, but you can build it up as they go. I think it makes for a fun, interactive gameplay. Anyways, that's all for now. Love you guys. Cheers.